Hey everybody, Four Tankers and Dog here. Welcome to another episode of Old Men Playing World of Tanks. Actually, we're going to start out with a beer story today, because this battle is going to take a while to kind of warm up. Um, I have a nice uh, Colch from Fort Point Brewery up in San Francisco to go ahead and have. And uh, uh, Monica, she she's European. She's half Czech, half Slovak. And um, she's never liked American beer, even like European style beer in America. She's always hated it. And um, we actually discussed this with this bartender uh, up in Vancouver one time. And actually, he had a great idea. This totally works. Put a pinch of salt in your beer, and it'll totally foam up, and a whole bunch of the CO2 will come out. Because that's kind of her complaint, is that American beers are always CO2 heavy. They always really bite back with that kind of tart, carbonic acid kind of um, hit. Whereas in Europe, they're just smoother. And, you know theories that we had were, you know, just it's different or brewed differently or served at a different temperature or I don't know, various things had never really kind of solved the mystery um, until uh, this last trip. We were actually at this pub that had Pilsner Urquell and we were in this spa town in uh, Western Slovakia. And we went to this little pub and, and they had, again, they had Pilsner Urquell and they had a, they had, she had the ability to go ahead and order the beer with different amounts of head. And this was like, interesting, that's odd. And so I actually ordered Pilsner Urquell, you know, in Europe with American style head, which means basically no head at all. That means poured slowly into perhaps a chilled glass and, um, you know, the foam cut off or whatever, and really just beer as much as possible, 100% beer, this teeniest bit of head on top. And she had one that was flat out 50-50, which is, extreme I mean, a normal pour is usually for pilsner or quell you order a liter of beer it's actually like two-thirds liquid and one-third head or so and they tasted totally different and the light bulb went off my head you know all you really have to do to get beer in america to taste smoother and less um less co2 y uh, is give it a bit more of a firm pour you know, um, if you're at a bar getting a beer or at a restaurant, I get restaurants, I don't know if you're successful at that, but a bar, you know, ask the bartender to pour you a bit more of a, a heady pour that's about two thirds, one third. And um, Bob's your uncle. It's um, it's kind of interesting. It's it's one of those things. You kind of need larger glasses, right, to go ahead and handle the, uh, the extra beer. We'll see how good a job I do here on this one. Um, we're doing not bad. It went a little too quick. This is a refrigerated beer and then a standard glass, glass off the shelf, room temperature. And there we go. Cheers. Anyway, we are watching this Spick here, kind of wondering when is the right moment to go ahead and attack him. Um, the IKV we lit behind us, and he actually it just got shot or is about to get shot. No, he just got shot for 141 hit points. Uh, so we spotted him. The Honey's looking at him. That's great. Um, but basically I'm kind of waiting for the spick to go ahead and overcommit so I can go in behind him and hopefully blast him with an HE shot, uh, and then a ram if necessary. Cause he is, you know, 619 hit points. That's more than I'm going to do in a single roll, but it is super important. This battle is on a knife edge right now. It's still early days, but still on a knife edge. And the last thing we want to do is have the spick come in and essentially turn the flank of our Northern side here. Um, if he does that, if he basically divides the attention of all our guys in the north and they start getting shot by all the TDs down there at F4, it's going to be a bad day. And so we're going to go ahead and move in. At the moment, as I'm moving away, the SU-100M1 gets lit as well. I didn't even notice this at the time. Also, the setter comes with me. We're both attacking this guy, which is probably a little overkill, but maybe again, he's a tier 7. Maybe it's a good thing to do. Go ahead and spin around and now I'm immediately thinking from what angles may I get shot from? Right? What angles might I get hit from? I want to hide myself right where the setter is behind that rock from the TD position as fast as possible. Always be thinking ahead when you do that kind of, I'm just going to go in and kill the guy. Be thinking about where I'm going to get shot from. Sometimes the best cover is literally kill the enemy tank and then hide behind him until you know, for 10 seconds until you go, to, until you go dark. Uh, it can be various options. Anyway, I'm going to come running over here. You get winged a bit by the leopard and then go ahead and tuck in fully. And uh, there we go. Now the 100M1 just appeared turning the flank on our heavies. God, this is, 
a couple of times in this battle, I'm going to end up being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Anyway, the setter went back up to the bush pile. He lights them. I'm coming up back around through the cap zone and uh, frack. And also, we're all of a sudden down by four tanks. Uh, three tanks. We're down by three gun barrels. The heavy zone is in a lot of trouble. Um, you know, don't throw good money after bad, but you need to farm the damage and support your team while you can. Um, initially, I was kind of thinking maybe fully defend, like go up to a row, but I decided, no, we've got enough tanks here. I'm going to go ahead and come in uh, and see if I can go ahead and help these folks out. It seems to be the 100M1, who is now dead, and the FL-10, and that's all that's there. Looking on the uh, list of tanks on each team, uh, there is a Mystery AT-8 somewhere. Um, that's a little concerning. and um, But nonetheless, basically what I'm thinking here is I'm going to go low, hopefully not be lit, and go and flank in behind this FL-10 and put a nice meaty heat round into his ass while he's distracted looking at the Covenanter and the 25 AT. And I hope the AT-8 is not mysteriously down here with him. Moving in, moving in, moving in, moving in. There he is. Oh, he pulled forward. I, I expected him to fall back. Let's <laughs> spin it around here. He seems to not notice I'm even there. So I'm going to go ahead and lock on the auto aim. The FL-10's clip goes ahead and kills off the T-25 AT. I just auto-aim a shot. It does track him, and he seems to have no repair kit left at the moment. It's on cooldown, maybe. So we'll aim in right under his turret, and we'll go ahead and finish him off. 10 to 9. Hit points are almost balanced. Our guys in the north finally get their asses in gear, um, and they're attacking, but we'll see how that goes. We feel like, well, we just lost somebody. We lost the Chi Nu. You know... When you win a flank, you really got to stop and think, do I want to just charge in, right? Because oftentimes the contact point, in this case the heavy zone where we were, or again the medium tank zone up in the north, that position where you can brawl is separated from the cap zones by kill zones for TDs that are camping. And so once you win your zone, you're you're full of bloodlust and you're just like, booyah! You gotta be really careful to not just then burn all your advantage, all your energy charging towards the enemy and walk into a trap. There's the grill, let's zoom it in. He clearly has six cents because he gets moving immediately. There's the AT-8, he is in the middle and we just lost the setter as well. So now we're down by a thousand hit points and a gun barrel again. The Covenanter goes yoloing in against the grill and seems oblivious to this AT-8 coming up behind him. Now, he totally gives me his side. That is great. Let's go ahead and see where we can fit a heat round. Only 50-50 chances against the hull, so we'll aim for his uh, the wedding cake on top. We put it in, but he really did not appreciate that at all, and he's coming towards us. Now, here's the question. I can't kill him with one shot. So while I could have tried to aim again for the Coppola and kill him. Again, that's not going to work. So I'm going to hold my shot and go for the track. Track him in place and now try to accelerate around him. He does burn his repair kit. Uh, a shot from Beef there missed. I get around the side of him. I go ahead and line up a heat round on his ass. It doesn't penetrate. Uh, Artie misses me and now let's get the hell out of here because um, that is a world of trouble. So now we are down by two gun barrels. The AT-8 appears to be coming towards me. Beef just missed another shot on the AT-8. All right, this chess match is like, the momentum is switching back and forth, right? We were on the defensive, then we were on the attack, and now we're definitely switching to the defensive again. What I'm thinking is to go north, disengage from the AT-8, Use this, you know, big pile of dirt here next to me to essentially block his vision, extend out, and then there's a couple of options, right? I could go back to, like, the original bush pile where I started the game over here, but I wouldn't be able to shoot, right, without getting lit. So I think I'm going to go up on top of the TD position. Basically, from up here, I can go ahead and project out vision to the whole center of the map, as well as over here on the 9 line, I think, so that basically nobody can sneak up on us. And, you know, me with my Binox, I should be able to light anybody before they light us. Um, 
even the leopard, right? If the leopard has got optics or whatever, if he's in motion attacking us, um, I'll still have more view power with my binoculars. Vice versa, if he has binoculars in motion, he won't have them active, right? So we should be in good shape. That being said, Beef and I are a little distant from each other. So it's a little hard to support each other here. Um, we can kind of shoot what each other are looking at, um, but it's not, you know, the, there is a lot of terrain between us, um, but it's very important to try to not necessarily be in the same positions, but be prepared to shoot at things the other person is being shot by, right? You gotta be able to support each other. Bishop's up. We go ahead and reload over to HE from Heat. Beef gets a shot in. My shot goes into his tracks. Beef has a leopard behind him. I tell him, ignore the bishop. Turn your armor around, worry about the leopard. I'll finish the bishop. There he goes. Now, um, let's spin it around. We have to help out Beef as soon as possible. That leopard is full hit points. And while his machine gun is likely to bounce significantly off Beef's armor, um, it's, you know, Beef doesn't have much left. He's got 106 hit points left. But the leopard spots the arty. And I gotta say, some people in World of Tanks, they just go crazy when they see an arty. They will do anything to kill it. Um, it's kind of... Uh, ignore it. Kill the things that can kill you first. So I go ahead and line up here a shot, wait for him to peek out. I miss. Uh, again, the leopard's like auto-aimed on the SU-122. He, he gets a shot into him. Beef gets a shot into him. And now I get to finish him off. A full hit point leopard just completely wasted on trying to and failing kill our arty. Um, that was a really, really bad misplay. So, the ball game is all tied up. Um, 12 to 12. We are down by 91 hit points. It's basically tied. We're going to do the same thing again. We're going to go right back up again. We still have a lot of time left. The game's about half over. So again, we're going to put up our Binox, and we're going to give it a little time to see if someone's going to make a mistake. We don't really need to push yet. If we need to push, either B4I will... I'll probably join him, because the, the, the kill zone in the south is brutal. It'd be much easier to leapfrog each other and come in down the 1-2 line, but... Again, with no rush, we got lots of time, and the AT-8 goes ahead and drives into the middle of the map to go ahead and get shot. So Beef is shooting at him, the AT-8's facing him, that's not gonna do anything right. I go ahead and get some damage, now I can wear him down eventually, as long as I don't let myself get artied. I'm gonna keep him lit, but one of the problems of the moment is that Beef and I are shooting him from kind of the same angle. I'm gonna take one more shot. Let's go ahead and line it up. And then I'm gonna work around behind him. Again, we back down behind the rock. We're looking for arty cover. We're waiting to go dark. And then we're gonna go ahead and flex around behind him to basically challenge him. <laughs> the beef is shooting HE now. He did 27 damage. We want to basically force the AT-8 to for face one of us or the other. The AT-8 does just kill our arty because he's just, I don't know what the hell the arty was thinking. That was weird. All right, so we're moving around behind him. We can peek out behind this rock, right? We should be already at already cover. We don't know where the Honey 3 is. If he's up there at B3, he could give me a wallop, actually, which would be not cool, but you gotta work with what you can see. Ah, oh, that snapshot misses, which really sucks. But again, he turns towards me, so now Beef can tag him in the rear nicely. He is down to a one-shot. Beef puts an HE again into his rear. We're looking for a peek. He HEs me for H team, which is pretty bizarre. I back up and oh, there's the Honey 3. He's right on top of Beef. Oh my God, I'm like, Beef, dude, just back up, play for time, I'm coming. Apparently the Honey bounce off. I gotta say the T3485M is probably one of the most bullshit cheater tanks at tier six. Uh, his armor is really, really good. So Beef just bounced the Honey and then killed him. Uh, we've got five minutes left to go find the grill. Uh, this game is done, but what a great, fan fantastic cat and mouse, momentum back and forth chess game of a match. There is the grill, we go ahead and spot him. He does not spot us in return, but he knows he's lit. We go ahead and zoom in our shot. Probably could have aimed that a little bit better but he didn't even spot me when I fired. So we go ahead and move over. We have a nice clear shot. 
Go ahead and aim in the final round. And that is the ball game. Let's go ahead and check out the post-game stats. 15 shots fired, 12 hits, and 5 penetrations. Not bad. We, we scored 3 splash damage? Like, that... That doesn't make sense. Anyway, we did 1,000 damage. Nothing special, but not bad. Um, got shot a bunch, sure. Uh, we actually did bounce a shell from the Leopard, which is always appreciated. Did 1,600 assisted damage, not bad. And we drove almost five kilometers. It was one of those drive all over the map, just rack up the mileage kind of games. Uh, I did not turn a profit, unfortunately, because I did shoot heat several times. Um, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? It would've been, it would've been so nice if that shot, that second heat shot on the AT-8 had penetrated, because then he would've been way worn down um later and wouldn't have caused as much drama but driving at that moment was more important than aiming it carefully so that's why i let the auto aim take care of the business over the team score we are tops in xp and uh not even close to tops in damage but we did five kills so not too bad at all and um oh beef beef hides his i don't get it i, I... I don't get why people hide their names. Like, really? Like, is someone really going to go hunting after Beef Supreme? Or me, for that matter? I mean, come on. that's That seems ridiculous. But anyway, so he, he hides his name. I'm here for Tankers and Dog. Um, let's see. What happened with the team? The Covenant did 1,500 damage. Not bad. Um, we had several good damage um, players on our team. Our setter did okay. Did he spot for much? 400. Well, I guess he did okay. Um, the RD did 500. Not great. A grill did zero. The enemy team, Panzer 43 Biss did good. The uh, FL10 did not so shabby. Um, the Bishop did 1117. That bastard. Um, but actually, not that, you know, we had quite a few people over or near a thousand, and really, they didn't really have that many. Interesting. I wonder if we had a, like a hit point deficit to start or something like that, because it was close. It's not like we had a whole bunch of hit points in the table at the end of the game. I mean, that was good enough for a first class with a fighter, a spotter, a duelist, a fire for effect, a Pascucci's, and a organic Brothers in Arms. Although just two players because Brother Thelonious couldn't join us this time, but so it goes. Not a bad battle at all. Thank you for watching. Please like, please subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. Nastravi and take care.